So the first thing that we need to do here is rewrite this improper integral as the limit of a proper definite integral. So we're going to have the limit as b goes to infinity of the integral from 1 to b of x e to the negative 2x dx. Now we have to evaluate this proper definite integral using the fundamental theorem of calculus and then take the limit as b goes to infinity of our answer. The way we're going to evaluate this is by using integration by parts. We'll let u equal x, and we'll let dv be e to the negative 2x dx. And then we need to find du and v. du is the derivative of u, so we get du is equal to dx. And then v is an antiderivative of e to the negative 2x. So that's going to be negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So then we have the limit as b goes to infinity of u times v. So negative x e to the negative 2x divided by 2. And that's going to be evaluated from 1 to b minus the integral of v du. So minus a minus 1 half is plus 1 half e to the negative 2x dx. And here we're going from 1 to b. So now we need to evaluate this part. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity, negative x e to the negative 2x over 2 from 1 to b. And then here, we need an antiderivative of e to the negative 2x. So I'll drop down this 1 half. Integral of e to the negative 2x is negative 1 half e to the negative 2x. So we can clean this up a bit. So we have negative x e to the negative 2x over 2 from 1 to b. Then we have minus e to the negative 2x divided by 4 from 1 to b. Now since both of these antiderivatives are being evaluated from 1 to b, we can write it as just one single compact thing like this. So we have this function minus this function. From 1 to b. OK, so now we will plug in b and then subtract the answer that we get when we plug in 1. So I have negative b e to the negative 2b over 2 minus e to the negative 2b over 4. And that's all minus, plug in 1, so we get negative 1 e to the negative 2 divided by 2 minus e to the negative 2 divided by 4. OK, so now I'm going to take all these e to the negative 2 b's and e to the negative 2's and drop them down into the denominator. So we get negative b in the numerator and 2 e to the positive 2b in the denominator. Here we're going to have 1 in the numerator and 4 e to the 2b in the denominator. Here we have minus a minus is a plus 1 in the numerator, 2e squared in the denominator. And again, plus 1 in the numerator. 4e squared in the denominator. So we'll take a look at this limit piece by piece. OK, so here, I'll start with the, this easy one here. As b goes to infinity, we have a 1 in the numerator and e to the 2b in the denominator. So b is going to infinity, which means 2b is getting super, super huge. So e raised to that is getting super, super huge times 4, still super huge. So we have 1 divided by a super huge number. So that goes to 0 in the limit. 
neither of these two has a b in it, so the limit of each of those is just those. The, next, the last thing we need to look at is the limit as b goes to infinity of this. So let's do that off onto the side. So we have negative b over 2e to the 2b. As b goes to infinity, the numerator goes to negative infinity, and the denominator goes to infinity. So this is the infinity over infinity type of indeterminate forms, which means we're going to use L'Hopital's rule. So to use L'Hopital's rule, we say that this is equal to the limit as b goes to infinity of the derivative of the numerator, so that's negative 1, over the derivative of the denominator. So that's 2 times the derivative of e to the 2b. And that's e to the 2b times the derivative of 2b, which is 2. So that means we have the limit. Okay, so that was L'Hopital's rule there. So we have the limit as b goes to infinity of negative 1 in the numerator and 4 e to the 2b in the denominator. So now, as b goes to infinity, the denominator increases without bound. So 1 divided by something increasing without bound goes to 0. So if we go back here to the limit we were looking at, we just showed using L'Hopital's rule that this goes to 0 as well. So that means that the value of the limit is 1 over 2e squared plus 1 over 4e squared. Oops. So here we get a common denominator to combine these. This is missing a factor of 2. So we multiply the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2. So then we get 2 over 4e squared plus 1 over 4e squared. So that gives us 3 over 4e squared. So what that means is, since the limit exists, this improper integral converges and it's equal to 3 divided by 4e squared. Okay, let's evaluate another one. Okay, the reason that this integral is improper is that when x is equal to 1, the denominator is 0, so we have an infinite discontinuity at x equals 1. Since 1 is included between 0 and 2, then, well, that's why we know we have the infinite discontinuity um, for this particular integral right here. So what we do is we take the integral and we break it up at that infinite discontinuity. So here we have that this is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of dx over 1 minus x squared plus the integral from 1 to 2 of dx over 1 minus x squared. So now the only way that this original improper integral converges is if both of these converge. So what we do is we pick one to evaluate if it diverges, we're done. If it converges, then we have to go on to the next one. So let's start with this one. What we're going to do to this is we're going to start by writing it as the limit of a proper definite integral. Okay, so this one right here is equal to the limit as b goes to 1 from the left-hand side of the integral from 0 to b of dx over 1 minus x squared. So I'll just rewrite this here to make it look a little bit uh, clearer. So we have b going to 1 from the left of the integral from 0 to b of 1 over 1 minus x squared dx. To evaluate this integral here, we're going to need to use partial fraction decomposition. So what we do is we rewrite it by factoring the denominator. So we have 1 plus x times 1 minus x. And then the question is, how do we decompose this? So we have 1 divided by 1 plus x times 1 minus x equals some constant a divided by 1 plus x 
plus some constant b divided by 1 minus x. So now we multiply both sides by 1 plus x times 1 minus x, and we get 1 equals a times 1 minus x plus b times 1 plus x. And now we find a and b by plugging in numbers for x. So we'll choose x equals 1 first because it'll make this term drop out. So we have 1 equals 0 plus 2b, so that's 2b. So that tells us that b is equal to 1 half. And now we'll choose x equals negative 1 to drop this term out. So we have 1 equals a times 1 minus negative 1, so 2a plus 0. So that tells us that a is also 1 half. So then what we get is here our improper integral, which I'll carry down below. is equal to the limit as b goes to 1 from the left of the integral from 0 to b a over 1 plus x, so that's 1 half over 1 plus x, plus b over 1 minus x, so that's 1 half over 1 minus x. So each of these we evaluate separately using a u substitution. So in this we'll let u equal 1 plus x, and this will let u equal 1 minus x. So then what we'll get is the limit as b goes to 1 from the left of 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x plus, oops, minus, after we do our u substitution, minus 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus x. And that's going from 0 to b. Okay, we can simplify this a bit by factoring out a 1 half. So we get the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x minus the natural log of the absolute value of 1 minus x. And then we can use properties of logarithms to rewrite this part. We have 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus x divided by 1 minus x. And that is going from 0 to b. So now we're ready to plug in b and 0. So we get the limit as b goes to 1 from the left of 1 half times the natural log of absolute value of 1 plus b over 1 minus b, and that's minus 1 half times the natural log of the absolute value of 1 plus 0 over 1 minus 0. This right here is equal to the nat 1 half times, well, negative 1 half times the natural log of 1, and the natural log of 1 is 0, so this here is equal to 0. So what we have to do is we have to figure out what happens as b goes to 1 in this. So what we'll do is we'll go piece by piece. As b goes to 1, 1 plus b goes to 2. 1 minus b goes to 0. So 1 plus b over 1 minus b is going to 2 divided by 0, which means it's going to infinity. Okay, since the input of the natural log is going to infinity, the entire output, I won't include the one half, the entire output of the natural log, okay, so again, the input of the natural log is going to infinity, so the entire natural log output is going to infinity as well. So this whole thing is going to one half times infinity, which goes to infinity. So that means that the limit is equal to infinity, and so therefore,
the improper integral diverges. Okay, so we find that this first one diverges, so automatically the original integral here diverges.